Hello and welcome back to our final set of notes in topic 5, bonding. This is section 5.7, intermolecular forces, and our aim for today is to describe the forces that hold molecules together. So we've been talking about bonds, you know, covalent and ionic bonds, which are what hold atoms together within a molecule. Now we're going to talk about what is holding mole molecules together within a substance. So bonds hold the atoms together in a compound. Okay, so here's your typical example of a water molecule. And you could see a bond would be this, um, what's shown here in this little structure holding together the atoms itself. So if this is water, if you remember, if you see this little uh, lowercase delta symbol, that this is a partial charge because it's a polar molecule. So the bond is holding together the oxygen and the hydrogen, a covalent polar bond. But within a substance, you have many, many, many molecules of water. So what is holding together the water molecules? This is where we get into intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces are what hold each molecule together. And the key to this is the hydrogen bond. So within a molecule of water, as an example, hydrogen here in this molecule is attracted to another oxygen in another molecule. So it forms an intermolecular force, which inter means between, molecular is the molecule. So within the substance, the molecules are attracted to each other. So again, within the molecule, you have bonding. And between molecules, you have intermolecular forces, and one of them is the hydrogen bond that would bond a hydrogen from one molecule to an oxygen in another molecule of water. So polar molecules create a situation called dipoles. A dipole is when you have a polar molecule, so it has two poles, kind of like a magnet, one that is more positively charged and one that's more negatively charged. So in an, um, a molecule of hydrogen chloride, for example, because the chlorine has a bigger share of the electrons because it's a, got a much higher electronegativity than hydrogen, this creates a more negative side of the chlorine and a more positive side of your hydrogen. Okay, so you end up with two poles. So a dipole molecule is a polar molecule with a positive area of one molecule, so hydrogen in this case, would be attracted to a negative area of another dipole molecule. And this is called dipole-dipole forces. So within, if you have hydrogen chloride molecules, each hydrogen will be attracted to the chlorine in another molecule of hydrogen chloride within a substance. So you have dipole-dipole forces in this case. Hydrogen bonds are the intermolecular bonds between hydrogen atoms in one molecule. And this works when hydrogen in one molecule is attracted to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in another molecule. So I was showing you that in the, in the previous slide. So if you have hydrogen in a compound and then a neighboring nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in another molecule, they create a hydrogen bond, which is another intermolecular force. So hydrogen attracted to another oxygen or nitrogen or fluorine in another molecule creates a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds are very strong forces. They're much stronger than your dipole-dipole force. And this is what causes a high boiling point of water. It takes a long time to boil water because the hydrogen bonds within the water are so strong that it takes a long time to put enough energy in to break that bond. So if you've ever boiled a pot of water, you know that it takes a considerable amount of time compared to boiling something else, another substance. So if you have an ammonia molecule or a hydrogen fluoride molecule, each of these would have hydrogen bonds between. So we know the setup of your NH3. So if there's a neighboring um, NH3, so another molecule of ammonia nearby, 
right? These are your bonds, your covalent bonds within the uh, molecule of ammonia, and then a hydrogen bond. A hydrogen bond is created here between the hydrogen and a neighboring nitrogen. You'd create a hydrogen bond, okay? And this bonds the molecules together within the substance. And the same thing would happen with a hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen fluorine, and if you have a neighboring hydrogen and fluorine, okay, here's your covalent bond between the atoms of hydrogen and fluorine, and then you create a hydrogen bond between the flu a neighboring fluorine and hydrogen. Okay, so this connects your molecules together within a substance. And here we created another hydrogen bond that is bonding intermolecular between your ammonia atoms. So here's some practice regions questions. Which molecule is a dipole? So remember, if we have a dipole, we have a polar molecule. And we're going to remember our snap. And if we're looking for polar, we want something asymmetrical. So if we draw lines of symmetry, that would be symmetrical, symmetrical, symmetrical. So these three would be nonpolar molecules. And right here we have our asymmetrical. And this would create our dipole. Hydrogen bonding is strongest between molecules of... Okay, so remember, hydrogen bonding is between molecules, intermolecular force, and it works with NOF. Hydrogen bonding occurs with nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These are the three hydrogen bonding works with. So we are, we're looking for something that contains one of these, and this is the only one that does. Your water molecule has strong hydrogen bonding. In which liquid is hydrogen bonding the most significant force of attraction? So again, when you see hydrogen bonding, we're going to remember NOF, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine attract a hydrogen bonding. So the only one that has any of those would be this one here. So hydrogen fluoride would work with hydrogen bonding. The unusually high boiling point of water is due to, so boiling point of water is really high due to our hydrogen bonds between molecules. Hydrogen bonds are very strong bonds, so that would be why boiling point of water is so high. It holds those water molecules together so tightly, it takes a lot of energy to break them to release it into the gas form of water, or water vapor. And that completes our notes. See you next time.